Too bad it's closed. I need a reindeer hide. Korean barbecue. You eat some of that first, then I'll eat it. Okay, guys, welcome to central Hong Kong, where we're just gonna wander around a bit because I need to do a few errands. Pretty much why I'm here. 
But before I go, I wanted to show you this. Over here is the HSBC Lions. These are two uh, castings of lions that sit in front of the HSBC headquarters here in Hong Kong, across the street from the Court of Appeals, which used to be the legislature. But uh, in 1941, Japanese troops invaded Hong Kong and they shelled with artillery and machine gun fire most of central Hong Kong. You can see a lot of the damage from the Japanese attack in these lions. Bullet holes, shrapnel, fragments, etc. These two lions were taken from Hong Kong and sent to Tokyo as war booty. And then they were found by Americans when we invaded uh, Japan. And they returned to the British government and the British Bank as a sign of returning back to normalcy here in Hong Kong. And they're still out here in front of the bank today. Pretty cool thing. Alright, so there's the tram that I was on. And many other trams. Trams are a couple Hong Kong dollars. It's like 30 cents maybe, I think. 30 cents to go across the island. It's really cheap. And it's not air conditioned. But it is fun. <laughs> it is actually fun. Especially if you get the front seat at the top. Everybody wants the front seat at the top. All right, we're gonna go into Central. I need a SIM card for my phone. Maybe we'll find one. Maybe we'll just get something to eat. I did have a huge breakfast, so I'm not sure if I need to eat that much for lunch. It is warm. It is about 82 degrees Fahrenheit. It's like uh, 26, 27 Celsius, something like that. A bunch of trams coming. So down here are some of the posh bits of downtown. That's Burberry, Dolce & Gabbana, St. Laurent. And then over here you've got uh, De Beers, the Diamond Folks. And next to them, I think Tiffany's is down here. At least one. Now, there are like 10 of all these shops in Hong Kong. They're all over the place. Oh, this is a watch place. There's Tiffany's, and Celine is inside. Now you say that, oh yeah, this is the fancy part of town, but the reality is that there's dozens of <laughs> Tiffany's and all these other luxury brand shops all over Hong Kong. They just love the mainland tourist money when it comes. All right, where am I going? I've got to go find a phone card. I think there's a place down here. This is Worldwide House. This is where most of the uh, Filipino domestic workers will be tomorrow. Tomorrow's their day off. So they'll be down here uh, shipping money and goods back to the Philippines and hanging out with their friends. It'll be pretty crazy. Uh, geez, now think about it. We've got a bit of a walk before we get to where I need to be. There we go. Yeah, it's walks. Yeah. I don't know what is about the Yankees hats. Everybody wants a Yankees hat. That's a model shoot there, that girl in yellow doing some sort of fashion shoot with the trams. It's pretty common to see around this area. Giordano, that's like a cheap gap. I, I use that for like t-shirts. I was actually going there this morning uh, until they found my luggage. But that's where I would have like picked up a bunch of cheap clothes. And Bossini, that's also cheap. It's like the $10 polo shirts, which would have held me over until my luggage arrives. If my luggage arrives. So actually, you know, we can cut we can cut through here, and it's like a huge street market right in the heart of downtown. All sorts of brand name goods that are slightly off brand. 
<laughs> Meaning you don't know if they're legit or not. They look like Adidas, and they're only $4 US. Oh, those are three. So the exchange rate is about 7 to 1, 8 to 1, 7.7, 7, 8. It's a fixed exchange rate, so there's no such thing as a strong Hong Kong dollar a week. It's all a pegged currency exchange rate that was designed oh, 30, 40 years ago to stop inflation, uh, rampant inflation in Hong Kong and Asian currencies. But uh, it drives some people nuts. Some Chinese outfits. This is the other side of the market. We went down the east side, this is the west. Lots of watches. They take a licking and then they fall apart. <laughs> it's pretty. I never understand why people buy luggage while on a trip. Maybe it's because they just bought so much stuff they need luggage to take it all home. Pringles. $2.50 for one outfit. So they were going through all of that. $2.50 each. I'm giving you the, the conversion for you in my head since I got pretty good at doing it. These are about five bucks. All those shirts, five dollars US. All right, let's keep moving down this road. This is where we were again before we went down the alley. Oh. I just don't like buses. They're too loud. They're loud and they're mean. The trams are just gentle, cool, and they make a little bell that goes ding ding. Buses are like, Wah. it's kind of sus. Oh, uh, we got another block. We got another block or two. All right, down there is like a, a block of mobile phone company. Whoa, bakery. Earl Grey cake, pistachio strawberry, 70% chocolate strawberry. Ooh, Hokkaido milk roll. Look at that, that looks good. If you've ever been to Hong Kong, you know the special place that bakeries hold in the city. There are bakeries just about every other block every block even in some areas and you can just get fresh well fresh everything all day long it's just it's part of living here that's really i really miss moving back to washington not having fresh rolls and everything that was a long life Now, this is new. This is the Central Market. They were renovating this for like 
I don't know, 20, 30 years. It's now open. I haven't actually seen everything that's inside there. We'll go check it out in a bit. Because the mobile phone places are just down here on the right. I think. At least they used to be. Sounds of the city. The walk, don't walk. Now this place up here, Best Mart 360 on my right, this is a Costco importer. All right, so they go to Costco in the U.S. They buy everything they can find. And then they bring it over here and sell it for like a 50% markup. That's their entire business. You see, Hong Kong's a free trading port. There are no customs duties, no uh, import fees, nothing like that. All right, let's see if we can get a mobile SIM card. Okay, so this is the escalator. It's a series of about a dozen escalators. It makes its way up the mountain, so you don't have to walk. I chose to walk because it's faster. <laughs> So in the morning it goes down, in the evening it goes up. And down there, that's my favorite noodle joint. Gotta line out the door. Apparently it's a busy place, Chimchaki. We're gonna be there in a day or two. Saving that for my younger one who comes, wants to have dinner with me tomorrow. Let's walk on this one. Restaurants are multi-stories here. The first floor is Thai. The second floor is Taiwanese. Then a beauty pageant. And then a Laos place, Laotian food. Spa. Here comes the party. The Rugby Sevens, April 5th through 7th. The biggest party in Asia. Well, one of the biggest. It is a craze party for three days of rugby. And, uh... It's a big social event on the expat calendar. All the kids from the school go. There's a Marks and Spencer. That's pretty popular here, M&S. Food. They actually fly food in from England. Like fly in cases of bread and stuff cooked in England, sold here the next day. It's pretty crazy. Ow. Just stepped on a step. place is popular. It smells really good too. Oh, it's got like donuts. This area around here is a big expat community area. Most of the shops here, in fact, it's hard to find a Japanese or Chinese restaurant uh, in these streets. These were dead during COVID. I mean, like empty. And they haven't fully recovered. They're a bit better. Oh, that's good pizza. I haven't been there in a while. Okay. There's some famous old places I used to go that are no longer around. Such was the effect of COVID and the cramped clackdown. A lot of foreigners just left Hong Kong. And thus, a lot of the restaurants that I used to eat at went out of business. Bummer. Let's see if the one place I want to go is still around. I think it is. Same old place. Same old Matthew. 
boy. Any good fish here? Oh my goodness. How you doing, bud? <laughs> Getting fat? Long time, how are you? I'm good doing good, man. Uh, wow. Oh yeah, this is fish and chips from New Zealand. Woohoo! Guys, this is hooked. Fish and chips on Kane Road. This is by far the best fish and chips I've ever had. I eat it all the time when I'm here in Hong Kong. And well, let me just break this sucker off so you guys can see what it looks like inside. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's gonna be so good. Mmm, mmm, so good. Oh my god, that was delicious. I have missed that so much. Ah, uh, Matthew and I had a good catch up. We haven't uh, we haven't seen each other since 2018. Uh, I came over during COVID, but he had to leave, so we missed each other a couple years ago. Uh, he's lost a lot of weight. I gained a lot of weight. Uh, but the chips are still amazing. The fish is amazing. Uh, so good. All right, let's go to my next lunch. Yeah, I got two lunches scheduled today. I got a lot of friends to catch up with. Hi guys, this is 3 a.m. dim sum. It's called 3 a.m. dim sum. That's a nickname because it opens at 3 in the morning. A uh, combination of taxi drivers and Hong Kong University students. It's really good. It's really crazy. Let's go inside and get some. 